production is part of the Game Fire Network. Netcast for gamers by gamers. Welcome to Game Fire. This is Tales of Heroes video replay review number 67 for March 9th, 2008. Hedro Siege. Tales of Heroes is brought to you by viewers like you. Thanks for your donations. Oh, welcome one, welcome all, welcome to another exciting episode of Tales of Heroes right here on the Gamefire Network. Tales.gamefire.com is how you can find us, but can you tell me what map we are on? How about if I zoom out a little more? How about if I zoom out a little more? Now can you guess? Taskbar on. It is Hedro Siege, ladies and gentlemen. Watch out. This is a siege. We've got Hedros all over the place. And, of course, wide open back doors to the, to the bases. But we'll talk about that later. So, welcome again to Tales of Heroes, your weekly Company of Heroes podcast. I am Bridger, a.k.a. Adam Ruzo, for the Game Fire Network. And with me, as always, is Rogers. Thank you, Sam Forrester, for coming on the show yet again. It's good to be here, Bridger. It's a, yet a privilege once again, and I'm looking forward to this game. It was sent to me by three of my good friends, um, and they said it's a chaotic, hectic game, and there's a lot of exciting carnage and definitely some high entertainment value, so I'm looking forward to it. All right, and if you'll notice, we've got six different colors in this game, so we're trying one of the options in, uh, in Company of Heroes that lets you use individual colors instead of team colors, so the orange and red, you know, orange, red, and yellow are the Axis colors, and the, and the bluish, the green, the blue, and the, the light blue are the, uh, the allied colors, and we're going to try this to see if it makes it easier to see what players in a team game are doing what, instead of just seeing a mass of red axis or allies, for example, and, and being like, ah, oh, well, we don't know which of those is which players. So it's going to be interesting to see how it goes. A little bit of an experiment. So let me introduce the players real quick. GR Pounder, HQ Trucks Gone Wild, Boogie FTW. Uh, those guys are playing, again. those guys are playing as the axis against Cacatus. HC Firefly 312 and Avian 88. So we're at the five second mark. Let's get her started in five, four, three, two, one. Unpause. All right, we're going to start up by uh, checking out HQ Trucks Gone Wild, which I believe you said is a Smurf name for the person who submitted the, the show. Uh, actually, Pounder gave the oh, okay. replay to me, but um, Sephirim, actually a good friend of mine, is under the smurf of HQ Trucks Gone Wild in tribute to Tales of Heroes, of course. <laughs> yeah, I like that so. name. It's like you see those late night commercials like, you've seen headquarters trucks, but you haven't seen them when they've gone wild. Normal HQ trucks in the day, but at night they're gone wild, 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 wild. These trucks are going wild. They reveal their... Tires. I don't know. So, let us uh, get checking on what's going on in the game. We've got a three pio start by the middle axis player, a two pio start by both wingers, and it looks like a two engineer start. Nope, three engineer start by the middle allied player. Sort of a mirror right now, as far as I can tell. Definitely. And, and we'll uh, see it'll be how interesting it goes. to see the the Vermont players will probably try to lock down the sides with MGs. That's that's what I'm gonna guess. That's what I normally try to do on this map because it, you gotta limit the allies' mobility even more and try to use the hedges and all the different choke points to your advantage because if you let the allies run all over the place, you are in deep trouble. Yeah, right now, the engineers, as would be expected, being behind cover and stronger than pioneers, won a little skirmish on the right-hand side. Very good observation, keeping track of his units. The uh, AVN-88 player managed to drop his guys right behind the sandbags as the pioneers approached, which allowed him to win that battle with no problems whatsoever. We got another engagement over here. As you mentioned, we got an H, uh, a heavy machine gun, machine gun 42, MG-42. Holy crap, my vocab sucks. Being forced to retreat by some nicely played riflemen flanking around from behind. That might have been a little bit of lapse in judgment for the, uh, from the Axis player. Uh, he wasn't paying attention to where those rifles were, or he just set it up and forgot about it for a minute. Yeah, he definitely overextended that position. He probably just should have uh, put it back there where those little drums of wire are near, near the VP and just kept it there because it's, mu it's much harder to flank in that position. It covers the entire arc near the strap points, so... Yep, but I tend to agree. Now, so. 
Here comes the MG. This is going to be a nice little setup if you can actually pin him in here. It yep. looks like they're going to flank again, though. See, oh, no, he doesn't get the suppression. He killed the guy, but now he did, oddly enough. I think oh, that's it was weird. the Volks who actually suppressed him. Yeah, they must, have, like... they must have lost enough morale from the MG to just barely get knocked into suppressed by the Volks. Yeah. Having to retreat again. I mean, I, I I love trying to trap someone with the MG like that. I like, I know they're gonna, you know, think that I'm putting the MG like facing this way, but so they're gonna flank around behind. But I'll have like the machine gun setting up to face like the opposite direction, and they run right into it instead of trying to instead of running around it. Yeah. I've only got that to work a couple of times for people that are not really paying really close attention to their flanking, but it, it's really awesome when it does work. And it's just like they're so close because they've been trying to flank right behind you that they just get obliterated. Oh, I yeah, love that word, I, I don't know if you noticed, actually, Bridger, but uh, HQ Trucks Gone Wild Sephirim was reinforcing at Pounder's uh, Wehrmacht quarters. Very nice job there. Oh, yes. So they're taking advantage of, uh, you know, his allies, teammates, buildings, and being able to reinforce there. And he might get, he might be able to stop the MG build. Ooh, this is going to be a close one here. Uh, he did. Well, Excellent. Oh, boy. That was, there that it goes. was very yep. well done. Absolutely. That's kind of surprising, and they actually did a little bit of damage to it, too, so I can't really tell from my from my perspective. It doesn't show whether it's done, but now it's taking so much damage from these other Volks, it's very obvious that it's not completed yet. But look at all those dead bodies around it. There's Volks, there's Engineers, now Riflemen are just desperately trying to hold on, but there's... Ooh! He might be trying to trap him in his base here or something? Where the heck's that NG going? Going to get raped by Engineers is what it looks like it's going, but he's not paying attention, so... The allies are cutting up through the middle, if you're noticing this. They're cutting off the strat and the plus five uh, near Boogie's base. So it's going to be... I really don't... I wouldn't know how to respond to this, because it seems like the Axis right now are going very MG heavy, very static defense oriented. They don't have a lot of Volks on the field, unless we're talking left side, which won't be able to help Boogie out very much on the right hand. No, you're right. We've got an OP on the plus ten munitions there. Interesting. Let's see if there's any other OPs going up. I don't see any. We got a big firefight. Volks versus rifles and engineers. Yeah, Volks have to retreat. That was a good retreat. Had to get out of there. No yeah. hope, especially when those guys were all behind the barrels cover there. That was nice. Might he be Early, right? putting, like, wire? Is that what he's going to do? Because that would be mm -hmm. awesome. It would. He's got engineers right there. Put some wire up. Be like, haha, get some pioneers. Just add insult Huge to injury. Huge bunch of rifles moving out from Firefly. Um, this is going to be a really, it's probably a two-pronged push, one from the south, one from the north. They're going to draw the MG's fire on one team and then probably just flank around. This is going to be a really, this could be oh, a wow. really uh, changing battle for the Axis Oh, here. no. Pinned from the machine gun in the back there, though. Mm. They've got bars, interestingly enough. But, yeah, that was an unlucky That's really pin. Early. That's Wow, look how long wow. that range is. I mean, it always amazes Beautiful. me. I know it's a long range, but the MG42 just continues to be, like, versatile. I guess that's the word I'm looking for. Flamer Pioneers versus Flamer Engines. Who will come out on top? Oh, a critical on the Pios. Kills them instantaneously. That wasn't even, like, a battle. Excellent reposition by GR Pounder there. He uh, moved his MG back and repositioned it in the back, and all this entire attack wave is shut down, in addition to MP40 Volks coming in and chasing off the entire wave. That was a very well done um, counter to that, that push there. Well done. Right. Well, it was HQ Trucks Gone Wild, actually. Brought his MG over there. Oh, really? It is? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it See, is. I can tell that because I have different colors. <laughs> oh, you cheater. Right, yeah, I well. guess so. All right, so in the middle, the uh, let's look at the VPs. The Axis still have strong control of both wings on the left and right side with uh, mostly with the help of those machine guns. Um, and now we might see another push on the left-hand side by Bard, three Bard riflemen and engineers probably upgrading more flamers on that other engineer squad. Those uh, MP40s are in big trouble. You just can't take yeah. three squads of rifles like that. Oh, man, he Especially might lose the whole here. thing. Oh, Forrest Gun no, made it out. It's up. okay. Yeah. There's that static harassment uh, that the Americans are doing. I believe that is... That's Cacatus, and he just stole an MG from probably either HQ no, Truck or Boogie. I can't tell whose MG that was, but... I believe that he was gets a green MG, there. so I think it was on the right the, the right wing Boogie player, yeah. I think. Boogie FTW. Yeah, yeah That's wow. a lot of forces on the le left-hand side. Are you seeing this, Bridger? Wow. Oh, this wow. Crazy. He's trying to decap One grenade it, in that trench. One grenade in that trench would just kill oh, everything. Yeah. 
Oh, jeez, but nobody can get near it. Look at that firepower. Yeah. Three bar Order, squads. Please. And a Order, stolen Order. machine gun. Oh, no, that's, an, that's an, uh, a heavy machine gun that's team. I listened to it. Gun. Yeah. The air-cooled Browning M1919. I don't know what he's what he's hoping to gain by just capping that strat point. He's like, well, now they can't see him. I don't think. Oh no, they can. They were just reloading. But yeah, that one MG. Got a huge blob to deal with on the right hand side too. A mortar is there, but it's Whoa. not really being used effectively right now, unfortunately. I think he built it to counter the bunker yeah. that's there right now. Wait a minute, does he have a machine gun and he upgraded it? No, okay. I thought he upgraded it to a machine gun nest and he's got a machine gun because I got some weird oh, yeah. graphics here. But All right, I hear a big fight in the middle. Yeah, bundle gren uh, just Ooh. a regular grenade going in. This is going to be good. No, wow. Oh, wow. Never mind. Never mind. I, we keep getting excited about grenadier grenades and then they keep letting us down. Yeah, I mean, they're not quite as bad as they used to be, but still. Oh, let's see ten guys die. No, let's see one guy die. No, let's see one guy, you know, stub his toe. Okay, yeah, the grenade Jump stubbed away, his toe. Yeah. Wow, there's a lot of rifle vet too. I'm noticing this is yeah, really they early. Really fast ARs rifle, and vet. rifle vet. Yeah. Good flank near Pounder's base on the left hand side by uh, Firefly. Ooh, you see this? Oh yeah, gonna look get at that. Them. Complete and utter flank. And the MG's Unless trying to reposition, but now it's completely yep. vulnerable. I would just retreat it. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, there you go. Nice job. <laughs> Block. I should have just grabbed them. Come on. The <laughs> Getting the plus five. He's cut off completely. Yeah. So they're going to grab that... that uh... Oh, we've got stormtroopers on the field now with doubles. Double, uh, double Shreks. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Is the uh, the allied player... He went weapon support that center, so I don't think he's going fast tech to, to tanks. Oddly enough... This machine gun's been in this building this whole time, and it's not really been helping him. Uh, GR yeah. Pounder on the left. It, it did help him a little bit in that first push, but unfortunately he hasn't been doing anything with it. You know, this is something I'd love to be able to do. Um, it's build bunkers, and I've never seen so many bunkers built, or machine gun nests for that matter, in any game where there's British or Panzer Elite. Because yeah. the mortars are just so easy and so powerful. Like, for example, the Panzer Elite, they're just so survivable. You know, if you set up them, and they're so, you know, they're they're what you get because you get them with infantry half-tracks, you know. With Americans, you know, mortars are just as, you know, are very delicate. They're very difficult to, to, to protect because they got to sit there for a second while they leave. And they, you know, I just, I just wish maybe the, uh, the mortar pit and the, uh, what would it be called, uh, Holy crap, the mortar half-track, maybe you would do a little bit less damage against bunkers, because I never see them when there's a Panzer Elite or a British player involved, because it's so easy to counter bunkers. It's like, it's a complete yeah. waste of 150 manpower, as soon as you put it down. Oh, nice counter! MP40, double vet, forcing... Yeah, get out of there. Come on. <laughs> Alright, so, wow! Massive infantry from Cacatus coming up the middle road. He's going to meet up with a Grenadier squad, a Bunker, and some Pyos. Oh, this is going to be very bad. Oh, he's got an LMG-42. Yeah. And I've got frozen this. Again. That's a lot of... Man, I bet I bet uh, Boogie's wishing he had bundled grenades right now. Because that is so much infantry. Oh my god, my freaking computer's slowing down. It's a lot of yeah, freaking fire. Yeah, mine too. <laughs> There were some great assault uh, grenades popped a little while ago by Boogie on the uh, right-hand side, which shut down an entire, which shut down two rifle squads that were attacking. Unfortunately, this mortar is going to go down too. Uh, like, yeah. Not paying close attention to that. He's, he's, I guess he's paying attention to the writer. He's yeah. doing something, but he didn't notice the mortar. Another uh, push to reinforce the left-hand side by Firefly. I think he's got. Yeah, first squad of Rangers is up. And he's probably going to get Tommy's. This huge push by Cacatus, though, has pushed the Axis completely out of middle. And it's it's given it's given the Allies just basically free way right down the road to all those resource points. And if they're smart, they're going to start decapping every single territory sector. Yeah, especially on their way. with the, the quick cap of the Yeah. The ra the At rifleman. least make the points neutral. That's, that's yep. what they got to do. Uh-oh. Because the more time you're... Uh, there's a straight Recon? Around, I believe. No, it's, yeah, it's Recon. Yeah. 
Didn't seem like mortars the best coming placement. somewhere. I hear mortars. It's probably left hand side shelling Pounder's base or uh no, it's shelling the MG in that building that's not doing much for him. Remember that one that was kind of forgotten? It's shelling that MG in there. Alright, so let's check out what's going on. Just as you predicted, very nice play by the sector. allied player mm -hmm. going and just decapping everything, including any points leading to the low fuel in the back. Yeah. That's pretty bad. That's 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 gonna hurt him. And I don't see anything in this area that is gonna do anything. The only major concentration of Axis forces is three MP forty squads. That's another thing you'd never see in a game against the British, because that just doesn't work. One of them's gone. The next one's got to retreat. One squad left. They still got double vet. But they're up against Rangers. I don't know who's going to win this one. Yeah, and they, they have the fire support from the building. So yeah, the they got to retreat that retreat. too. How much damage did they do? I mean, let's see. They got uh, three Rangers, it looks like. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if that was really worth it, honestly. Now... Maybe if they'd popped heal, uh, health packs mm -hmm. on they all three of them, bit. that would have been really cool. We have a stud out by Sephirim, which is going to deal with these marauding uh, rifles. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hopefully, I mean. Um, but, uh, oh, of course, but it's the so projectile slow. comes down so slowly that they had oh. a really good retreat right there. That's a really good retreat. That's a smart retreat. Oh, that could have been bad, but... The retreat moves very quickly, so... Oh, wow! Oh, no! Wait, was that a strafing run that did absolutely yeah, nothing? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it killed uh, nothing. It completely missed that uh, storm squad. Not even a scratch. Mm. See, one thing that's so good about this harassment that the uh, allies have done up the middle... <laughs> oh, it's a killing is pocket! They're gonna... <laughs> they're... Oh, I see. <laughs> Just the road of death, but... Uh, basically, they're going to force their opponent to take combat units off the field and put them in rear guard action to cap all these points. So it's a really smart move, what they've done. Yep. The left-hand side MP40s are charging again. Double again, that, don't charge a flamin we're for an, a, a flame pioneer in a building. That's going to be bad. Don't worry, there are only two, three windows and BARs are shooting out of all of them. Oh, there you go. Power. Okay, well, you got lucky there, I guess. Yeah. He still got a Volk squad in trouble, though, on the right-hand side by that house. Oh, it riped out a mortar team. Nice. <laughs> yep. That was important. Big, big, big win there. Getting that mortar team. That's just... And it didn't even drop a mortar, so there's no chance of him rearming it. Yeah. I thought I could have heard artillery somewhere. Maybe I'm just hallucinating. These MP40s are doing a lot of good for the Axis player. I'll say that much. Because they have really been crucial to him hanging on to just about everything. Oh, nice setting up a machine gun, but it's not going to do it against the Rangers. They yeah, got too close to already. Up. It I was didn't... a good little. It was a good little tactic, but he just. I probably he probably Ooh. didn't see the HMG or the Rangers until it was too late. Yeah. Useless vet. <laughs> Where's he talking about? In the back there? Uh, he's talking about the left-hand side. Oh, the left-hand uh, side. Oh, okay, yeah, like all the MP40s. These are, you know, going down, but he oh, he's is got against a different color here. That's why I'm confused. Yeah. Strafing run coming on the right-hand side, maybe? No, it's just, uh, just a recon run. We've got a Puma on the field from Sephirim, so that's definitely important, along with that stud that's still alive. Not a kill to its name, unfortunately. Yeah. Huge, massive, uh, uh... Build up here. Right hand side? On the right hand side by AV88. Yeah. yeah, you see this? MP44s are up, so let's see. Boogie is in tier 4. Oh, here comes assault Inspired Assault. Oh no, Assault Grenades, yep. They're really effective, actually. I'm, I'm really surprised, but that squad needs to get out of there really badly. God. Yeah, they're gonna have to get out of there. Oh, jeez. They did get quite a few kills there. Wiped out almost they the did. whole rifle squad. What time I'm do you have right now, by the way? I have uh, 16.35 right now. All right, behind by about three seconds. There we go. All right, Nine. should be locked up yet again. Okay. Let's see what we got. Armored car defending in the middle. I'm surprised there's so few fights over the middle because usually you see pushes through the middle to try and cap that VP on the uh, back area. Oh, no. Volks hit a mine on the left-hand side, it looks like. Very nice. Uh, or, no, they must have... No, that, that was probably not... A mine that was probably just uh, suppression fire with from the bars. I saw him pinned, and I assumed it was a mine. That's a lot of ranger squads. Uh oh, too. I mean, still. Ooh, Sta pops in. That wasn't too bad, but it could have been worse. Could have been a lot worse. That was a good retreat for the allied yeah. player. You kidding me? That was absolutely awesome. I mean, the other option was just to spread them out real quick and try and hit them with bazookas, but uh, 
That could have done a lot of damage too. Yeah. He's Level got double production. support vet. From the supply yard is actually up right now, so that's good. That means we're well. That's not good, but it's it's interesting to see that used, and it's gonna definitely help the allies spam rangers and whatever else they want to. You said he so. got the supply depot upgrade. Yeah, he got the supply depot level one production upgraded. So he's gonna be getting manpower a little bit faster. I gotta wonder what. Whoa, we uh, have, what hands are four up on the left hand side from Boogie. Ooh, that's gonna be useful. Or is it hiding? I'm not. Oh, on the left hand side? You yep. mean right, oh, hand, right side. hand side? Okay. But there's a 57 mil kind of distracting him from it. He's probably going to one shot this. No, it misses. Oh, Huge yeah. Huge push on the left hand side as well. Uh, the allies are doing a great job of just constantly pushing, depleting manpower. Look at all the mines on the left hand side. This is really smart play here. They're, they're bunkering this area down. Oh, wow. Yep. Completely blocked it off with mines. All right, we got the stu uh, shooting over at a building, actually missing yeah. and hitting the hedgerow every time, I think, because it can't actually shoot yeah, over it. the hedgerow until it destroys it. It looks like these rangers are going to participate in the battle for the hill up here. Actually, they're probably going to try to take out the stu. Yeah, they're going to take out the stu. No, they're it's... running into it instead. <laughs> they're trying. Oh, did they just run into it and die? They did. Oh, they... oh boy. Oh, man. Here comes potential stickies. Nope, maybe not enough resources. I don't know. I don't know why he's charging it if he doesn't have stickies to throw. Well, I, I think he's after the, the repairing pile squads, possibly. Ah, I see. But, uh... Now we've got a Stu on the right-hand side and a Panzer IV as well, which both have... Is that Blitzkrieg on him? Mm. Or Inspired Assault? I didn't think Inspired Assault affects tanks. That was just a no, lightning it bolt. It's Blitzkrieg, it right? It's li yeah, it is. Okay, that's weird. I, I, I can't understand why he'd pop Blitzkrieg, but he's just sitting right there. He must have been doing something else earlier, but uh, he saw or the... Or he missed it, if it's possible, yeah. 57mm AT gun. Oh, no! I thought he got out of there. I didn't see it. it uh, I thought that was damaged engine, but it was actually a uh, kill shot. Yeah, the Panzer IV went down on the right-hand side, unfortunately. Poor Boogie. There goes what happened? First, uh, what happened to 8888? He, he, he had a big old push on the, on on the right-hand side here. And then he left nothing but the 57 mil to guard. He had to retreat everything. Mm. Wonder if it was. Prop I think he's relocating to the middle right now. Um, got Cacatus has a whole bunch of forces over there, and uh, it looks like yeah, there was a complete retreat by AV and 88, and he doesn't even have a uh, uh, full health units that he's sending back into the field. So this could be he's oh he's building a 50 he's building a 105. Are you seeing this Bridger? The far right base. That's, that's Cacatus actually. Oh, it oh, wow, okay. Well, yeah, see, yeah, I, can, I, guess... I, I like this. I can see who the heck's doing what. He's building <laughs> it in his base for some reason, but he's building it. Well, he's getting. Uh, he's probably doing it so he can have fire support on the entire right-hand side so they can get that VP back from Boogie. Yeah, so that's, that's what they need. Good allied teamwork here. Good on both sides. Panzer Command up from Pounder <laughs> as well. Holy crap. What else do we have? Uh-oh. Is it's that... firing on Boogie's... Is, no, oh, that's the how the it's the on map howitzer. Yeah, it's on map. It's firing on the stone on the right. It did take oh out yeah, the I can see it now. I can see it coming in. Yeah, the stuff flattened that bunker like nothing. Oh yeah. So let's take a look at the tactical view here. The Allies have now pushed up and captured a lot of the territory that was formerly Axis on the right and left sides. They really, I mean, they, they pushed the Axis back from the middle and captured the strat point, but that's not where their location is, which is odd, because I feel like the middle with roads in every direction can be a very good staging position to keep tanks and whatever, to go in whatever way you need to help the team. I feel like that's the middle yeah. player's job, is to hold that center and go and help whatever side needs it, but maybe the center's a little too hard to hold, I don't know, because of the number of roads that are coming to it. Yeah, I'll, I'll agree with you there because uh, we have a 105 up by Firefly as well, and that's going to shell Pounder's base. Oh dear, that's going to hit his little staging area of soldiers. And a Nebel is firing, uh, that's Pounder's Nebel firing on the little house where we saw those MP40s engage earlier in the game. Rangers are oh, yeah, but they're getting He's they're dropping now. them on Rangers. Nice move. He didn't want to retreat him, so he just hit fire up to unpin him and get him out of the range of the of the Nebel. Not much hitting on the left in the base there. It looks like he got the guys out of the out of the way in time. 
Oh, Boogie stole an AT gun on the right hand side. He took the yep. 57 with his Grens. Haha. <laughs> I like that. I saw that earlier. He brought it all the way back to his base. That's a very good job. Yeah. Now, you never see the use of uh, American AT guns as much in PE games either. They used to be, uh, I mean, the be-all, end-all of the Allied anti-tank movement. Oh my god, but nice move! Storm sneaking up from behind and, like, Shrekking an AT gun <laughs> to death! Just, boom! Two shots from Shreks. They must have been weak, like had been hit earlier by tanks or something, but... Dang. Uh-oh. Off-map Howie. That's like a propaganda war right there for your guys. Get him out. Did we just lose that? Yeah, we lost the uh, the Puma. More damage there. Forcing the HQ trucks gone wild stuff out of the way. That was a good engagement on the left uh, where that bro where the drop bazooka is by that strap point where the stu is fending off. We're just actually just killed a rifle squad. Uh, there was a whole bunch of rangers there that got obliterated, not killed, but brought down to like one man. Or maybe they did get killed. Yeah, they did. I think he lost uh, one Ranger squad in that engagement with a whole bunch of MP40 uh, uh, triple well, vet he, bulks. Yeah, he's got two Ranger squads back at his base on the left. But, oh man, I believe the stu... Did the stu charge through those mines and take all that damage? I think it did. It's got half health and it's got a damaged engine now, but it allowed the, uh, the Knight's Cross to push in. Triple vet Knight's Cross versus an MG bunker. I don't know what he's doing with that stu. He wanted to get it out of the way of enemy reinforcements or something. Trying to sh okay, he's gonna one shot, almost one shot. The bunker is what he really needs to take out, though. I mean, the, here comes uh, all the reinforcements now, and Pounder should just retreat those damn knights across. He's just, he's just bringing them low health, and uh, also there's another 105 up by Firefly. Holy oh crap. no. Oh, two stickies, two stickies, it could be too late, immobilized and gone. Let's check out the massive amount of forces on the right-hand side. We've got mortar team, mortar team, two M8s and an AT. Here comes a panther, though. The AT's not in position. Finally turned it around, probably going to hit armor-piercing rounds or some such, but he's going to lose an M8. He's not careful enough. Probably Main gun destroyed. Repair it, Boogie, repair it. Oh, oh no, wrong. this is a bad idea. He's repairing, but he shouldn't be charging. Maybe, maybe he should, because there's no handheld AT to back this up. There's no tanks to back it up. He can just drive around it all day if he really wants to. But no, he's backing up. That's no good. Don't. Oh, nice, oh. nice. After he moved it. He had some artillery. We have a tiger on the field from uh, HQ trucks gone wild on the left hand side. I Triple see it. vet. He's making a huge little blitzkrieg here against uh, Firefly. Trying to help out Pounder. Panther didn't make it. I thought it was probably a bad uh -oh. idea to charge that gun with no help, but... Yeah. Ooh, big hit. Big hit. Didn't do too much damage, but big hit. Mm. That stu is 24 kills. <laughs> Holy <laughs> crap. With a triple vet, too. That's from HQ Trucks Gone Wild. And those MP40s are finally working. Uh-oh. Is he dropping an airborne? That is a... Yeah, that's yep, not a good idea. He's dropping in airborne, airborne and supply, and drop. supply drops. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Miscommunication there, probably. Miscommunication. Probably. That's too bad. I don't know. Did the Axis player just grab both of them? Here comes the Tiger and the Stu against nothing but Rangers and Triple Vet. Really bad news for uh, Firefly here. Rangers. He's in trouble. Even with bazookas, they don't have bazookas. But even if they did, they'd be in big trouble. Now I think the Stu took some shots. From stickies. Yeah. And they All got out of, of the uh, way. All of Firefly's infantry effectively got obliterated there on yep. the uh, left hand side. He could but lose his AT HQ. gun being brought from Tacitus, which is good. They need a lot more AT though. Stop that tiger. Yep. I think the stuff's gonna eat it right here, on the left hand side. Yeah. Oh, there's a second AT gun. I didn't see that. Tacitus and then uh, HC Firefly also dropped one. The tiger's taken. The tiger's taken remarkably small amount of damage so far. Yeah. Now where is? Did he? He must have killed the uh, the machine gun, the base machine gun, right? With the tanks. Yeah, he blew that up really quickly. So now he just actually. needs to charge in with the. He's got three triple vet 
Knight's cross holders. He could go in and take out those AT guns and have a ball, but, oh man, a machine gun. And then, oh no! Oh no! Oh, that was bad. Lost a whole squad and then almost another squad. Yeah. That's what I'm I, saying. I think, yeah, I think I remember uh, Pounder screaming about that because that's terrible. That was that was really our uh, accurate fire there from that howitzer. Yeah, it was lucky really shot. Strange. If he had just charged in with those Knights Cross, he had triple vet, he could have easily taken out both ATs and probably the Howie, too, before having to retreat. And that would... Oh, yeah. no, there was a machine gun back there, I think. I'm pretty sure they were suppressed by something, which is why he wasn't bringing them in. Oh, another no, ATs another ATs grenade. Down. Oh, man, that's just bad news for those Knights. Ooh! They run around the corner, and it's just like point blank, doom, doom, execution style. Yeah, he should have just pulled that squad back because there are just some vet squads and a whole bunch of AT guns. And it's good that his allies came to his rescue in a sense. Um, so he pulled Firefly out of the fire effectively. Ha, huh, no pun intended. Yeah, uh, but right. But Cacatus really helped out. And uh, Cacatus is a fellow Ranger user. So, oh, we have Knight's Cross raiding through that blind spot you were talking about, Bridger. And it looks like they might get Cacatus Ooh. double vet. His double vet 105. Yeah, I see it. But I don't know. They're, they're not going to really... Maybe they can Panzerfaust it. Oh, no, they only have the single vet. They need triple vet to do the Panzerfaust in this patch. Yeah, that's true. They're not going to be able to destroy the howitzer itself. They're just going to force him to reman it. Dropping airborne in. Like, that's going to counter single vet Knight's Cross. Or no, he's dropping in supply drops? Did he notice? I don't understand, but the uh, the blind spot is right over here on the right hand side. This machine gun doesn't cover it. Nothing covers it. You can just sneak around in and sneak out. Check it out, though. Uh oh. Five is being used by the Knights Cross, and they're gonna shell the HQ. It looks like. Oh no. Oh, I saw it do something, but maybe it on it looks like it bugged boogie. or something. Yeah, I think it bugged. Oh, that Left hand sucks. side, uh, Pounder just got a tiger up. Oof. I, I wish, I, I'd really like to see uh, Avian 88 push out on the right hand side. It's not guarded. And, uh, oh, yeah. Really make for that. I was just thinking about that before I was looking over here. I'm like, dude, you've got how many freaking mortars, two mortars that you've had for the last 10 or 12 minutes, and the only thing standing between you and this victory point is a fucking bunker. I'm yeah. just like, come on. Go after the I mean, VP. Uh, this isn't annihilation here, buddy. Yeah. Meanwhile, the 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 Axis player, despite uh, them pretty much losing the right hand side, are still winning because they haven't they still got the VP. What do we got on the left? Big fight on the left. It looks like. Ostwins that have Blitzkrieg. <laughs> Ostwins with Blitzkrieg versus place. tons of uh, infantry here. Double vet infantry, and uh, oh man, Nebel coming in too. Blitzkrieg with Ostwins, triple vet Ostwins. That that seems very uncounterable. <laughs> Well, except against a tank. That's about it. Yeah. Boogie's base is getting raided on the right-hand side, but he's got a Panzer IV there to help out. Um, why would you bring... Why would you bring a mortar in there? That must have been a mistake. Yeah. Why would you bring a mortar into the enemy's base? He's gonna... It looks like he's gonna get the Panzer IV, maybe. What the heck was killing the Panzer IV? I don't. Oh, there's the AT. I didn't see the, oh, the AT, AT before. Got in the bushes. I couldn't see it. That's really odd that they didn't go for the right hand VP though. He could have just taken all those defensive forces, knocked out the bunker with the MG in it with a with a with a on map Howie and just completely um, taken the right hand VP. They really. That's a mistake in my opinion. Yeah. Left side Axis base, GR Pounder is getting shelled by the uh, the Howitzer. His Panzer Command is actually dangerously low on health. Um, yeah, and his Tiger so back there could really from. use some, uh, some, some love from Pioneers. Yeah, his base is starting to look like the moon, I'll say that much. Yep. I think Boogie could be in trouble here on the right-hand side if, uh, if he gets some allied support. They remanned the uh, 105 on the right-hand side from those Knights Cross. They remanded, it, so hopefully he can give some fire support. And oh no, another tiger! So we do have triple blitz. Oh no, Boogie has a tiger out. <laughs> oh wow, and it's triple vet too. Lots of it really is. good veterans to use. Vittensby would be proud. 
Definitely. That's now, very important, this late game um, stage. Allies are finally... No, they're not, are they? Yeah, they are. They're finally capturing the left VP, which is now finally going to, to stop the ticker. Oh, yep. Come Osman Creek. They're crushing hedgerows. <laughs> really? Did he crush a hedgerow yeah, to come in there? Every vehicle, um, every tank in uh, the Axis arsenal, when it's when Blitzkrieg is activated, it has heavy crush. I thought it was only Panzers, pa uh, Panzers oh. and Panthers fours before. That's interesting enough. Oh yeah. no! Oh no! Move! Oh, they ki they killed one AT already. They flanking the other yeah. and killing that too. That's oh. good micro there by Sephirim. Yeah, he's probably gonna lose one of these pan uh, flak Panzers though. One bazooka just has to go off. Just one. Oh my God! Wow, triple vet Blitzkrieg Ostwins. Look out. All he needs to do is bring in like three Volk squads and just capture two ATs and a ton of bazookas and machine guns. Look at all this stuff here. Pretty this much. is crazy. Bars, mortars, another machine gun, another another AT gun. He's got three AT guns. He just needs to pump out Volks and, and bring in stuff to defend this stuff while he captures it. These Nebels, one Nebel got KO'd from Pounder. Um, near the hill on the left hand side. The other's moving forward. Looks like here comes the first assault from Boogie into the middle. He's got his infantry column coming up now. Unfortunately, they're cloaked. Uh, you should just uncloak him until he gets closer to the field. This tiger yeah, is Yeah, actually that's HQ trucks. Oh, it infantry, is? but it's Boogie's tiger. Oh. All right, yeah. I gotta turn on that player colors next time. Yeah, right. Nebel's firing on the 105 crew, and it might actually kill the double vet AT crew. I mean, on the, the left? Uh, yeah, oh. left, left hand vet artillery. Yeah. Looks like the dot might end before. Nope, it killed him. Wow. There's your double vet gone. That was actually a critical, I think, because they were only at about 10% health. Uh, and then all yep. of a sudden, boom, crew killed. Meanwhile, we have it shooting okay. where? The base? Yeah, Maybe? it's shelling Pounder's base. They're really after Pounder. They want to knock him out of the game. Oh, the Panzer Command's gone! They killed it. Yeah, yeah, they did. Sturm Armory's dangerously low. He doesn't even have a Wehrmacht quarters anymore. His HQ is at about three quarters. His Comcraft Center is even in trouble. He really needs How to get in there. How much damage Blitzkrieg, Triple Vet, Knights Cross do on the left hand side? Just one squad. How much can they do? <laughs> Let's find out. Well, backed up by Ost Blitzkrieg to Ostwinds. Pretty much anything he wants. <laughs> no kidding. No, <laughs> <The> <laughs> trying Allies again with those AT guns, huh? <laughs> it's not gonna work. Those allies really need to call in, save up for some off-map uh, combat groups, and hopefully get some M10s. Yeah, I because guess. Because unfortunately, they... whoa, we actually have a croc and two M8s, so it looks like uh, Avian did use uh, off-map. Where? I, I so on Where's the right-hand side, because he's got two M8s sitting in his base unupgraded, and it looks like he's building another tank. Of some oh kind. yeah, yeah. Okay, he's got an M10. No, he just builds M8s. I don't know if he used off-map combat group, but... Maybe. That'd be really weird to be spending resources on that early, uh, late game, unless you're an uh, armored company. Pounder's sneaking into the base on the uh, left-hand side. He's yeah, sneaking I see into... it. He might even get uh, this other... Uh, Howie, he's going for it. He he's got to do it, because his base is in tatters. It is. And he's remanning it with Volks. <laughs> Payback, bitch, I tell you. Yeah, it is. All this armor needs to get moving on the right-hand side because they need help in the middle so they don't lose uh, those VPs. Not to mention on the left-hand side, how many Tigers have been sitting back there being repaired for this whole game? Because I think it's a little bit... Yeah. It, I feel like... Oh, there's a Tiger in the middle. Okay. In the base. I just... Five is shelling. Where's that shelling? That's shelling. Cacatus is... No, Avian's base. It's trying to knock out the other 105. <laughs> oh, wow. That's a great idea. <laughs> he got it, oh. too. <laughs> I shouldn't be, I didn't even think of that. That's, and he got the bunker. That, oh, he hit the so bunker. Good. Didn't kill it. That's so good. That's well done right there. I thought he would go after Look. the HQ or something. It's right next door, but <laughs> it's awful. That's <laughs> it's really just fun. mean. What do you got for a time? I got, uh, let's see, 36, 56, 57, 58. Awesome. We're synced up. All right. And uh, it looks like the VPs are still split even. If uh, if Avian can make a good push here on the middle, he might be able to hold these VPs and take the right one and still stay in this game. 
Yeah, I mean, interestingly enough, the allies hold only the middle VPs, even though the Axis are capturing the middle vo point here. Blank now they're gonna, now they're gonna take it. The officer's gonna cap. We got a triple vet officer. He's running the Blitzkrieg. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> Blitzkrieg's off, so he slows to a little jog now. Yeah, I, I think this is pretty much over now that HC Fireflies out of the game. Yeah, he's been obliterated. Two tiger in his, two two tigers in his base. That's that does not spell good times. Nope. Unfortunately. What else we got here? Knights cross. Ooh, getting, getting hurt. Yes, a bit. hurt. That is right. Mm -hmm. A ranger, Empire. two rifle, two ranger squads, two rifle squads, and flame engineers versus knights cross does not spell good times either. Check but. out this armored column chasing the tiger on the right. <laughs> it's going. The croc is shooting the flames <laughs> at it. <laughs> oh man. If, if he could get an M8 mine behind that tiger, he could immobilize it and knock that sucker out, but tank pathing for the loss here, gentlemen. Yeah, um, I have only one word of advice for Avian88. Our, um, basic training series are available at tails.gamefire.com. And then a massive retreat, uh, I think it was Avian and Cacatus tried to save... Uh, Fireflies base, but it just didn't work out. There's way too much stuff there, and <laughs> all this low this. health this for like... chasing this tiger. <laughs> you know what this is? This is like. Uh... Let me see if I can do this. All right. Yeah, Bob, we got a uh, tie up on the Interstate 305. It looks like we've got a number of M8 uh, armored cars. What? What the hell are you talking? About? Yeah, armored cars, and it looks like an M10 tank destroyer are having a high. I mean, sorry, low speed chase down through the uh, 305. So anybody in the way is going to get crushed. There goes a tree. It's uh, it's a tough time down here. And the M8. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Bob. You're supposed to do weather. What the heck have you been smoking? And how did you get into the hat traffic helicopter? I don't know. I just check out this Osman. These Osmans just decimating uh, Cactus's base. Oh come on, pull up Grips Blitzkrieg again. This is an oh oh one Ranger left. Yeah, this this is gonna be over any minute now because we already lost one base. Oddly enough, riflemen are left. They forgot to kill the barracks. <laughs> so, but you know what that means is he can't build engineers, I don't think, to repair his HQ. You know, you have to have, like, lost everything in order to get that yep. engineer drop. He built a jeep. The AI <laughs> is building jeeps. He left? Oh, wait, he's still... I, think I thought he, he was did, still... Yeah. I didn't know he's left. Well, <laughs> of course the AI now. builds jeeps, and then it goes, oh, a strap point, I'll go get it. <laughs> Considering he's infantry, I don't think it would help him that much. <laughs> no, I guess not. I think there was a double strafing run called on the uh, on the tank column, and I think both the planes got shot down. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, they fell off the map. Yeah, unfortunately. That would have been awesome if they would have crashed in all the tanks and killed them all. That would have been hilarious. Man, this is this is this is pure pure ponage right here. This is definitely uh, HQ trucks gone wild. Now, axis. if only they would have been triple Brits and uh, all rushed with three HQ trucks towards the enemy's base and tried to crush their HQ. <laughs> I gotta see if that's possible. Probably not, but uh, you never know. HQ trucks crushing an HQ? Yeah. <laughs> Why would it be possible? I have no idea. I don't understand. As you should. Look at all these tracers from the Osman. They're firing so quickly. And then the rifles are doing push-ups at the middle base. On the, le the left-hand side, that's hilarious. Just up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, and they're dead. Big push here by armor uh, charging this panther here. Engineers are taking the taking the lead here. You know, that's actually a large amount of allied armor. Panther's not going to be able it to is, deal with that. But, uh, there's a tiger and a panther coming up behind him. Oh, well then. Unfortunately. And I think these rifles are just staring at the destruction and asking the... Asking God why, why has the war done this to our comrades? Because <laughs> they're just standing there in, in complete disbelief, all standing like a... Here we have, I'm going to call this um, Hurricane Blitz coming into the base <laughs> now. The last base. Oh no, the Jeep will, they must survive. The Jeep they war. They must survive. You know, actually, I think Mondo. it might have been a tactical decision to leave the barracks on there so they couldn't, you know, rebuild behind them. I'm not sure. Uh, but it could have been. 
That is so much. Look at all that from uh, Sephirim on the right hand side. And also Pounders with him too. Look at all that stuff. That's it. All the armor. Wow. Yeah. All the armor, infantry. That's definitely France in 1940. <laughs> yeah. That is actually once once I think what it was is those howitzers. When one howitzer turned and shot at the other, that demoralized the Americans so much that they just lost. Oh man. That was a pretty crazy ending, actually. I don't think we've seen an annihilation type ending. I mean that was basically annihilation. He dropped before they could get annihilated, but that was pretty much annihilation. <laughs> yeah. Whew. Crazy, uh, crazy game. Indeed. Oh man. Excuse me. I've been playing way too much Super Smash Bros. up all night last night. Came out. It was awesome. I'm not giving you my friend code, though, because it's way too freaking long to remember. Oh, I hate you, Nintendo. All right. So, back to Company of Heroes. Crazy game. I think um, I think it could have been a lot different if uh, the right-hand allied player had been a little bit better. Um, they could have had that victory point the whole time. The left-hand allied player wouldn't have had to knock his head against a wall trying to capture the left or trying to capture the left-hand point in order to stop yeah. the uh, the ticker. He could have just sat back, concentrated on defending his base and shelling the Axis because uh, he almost had GR Pounder's base gone. I mean, GR Pounder was down to what at the end of the game a a one-quarter uh, Sturm Armory and a one-quarter Comcraft Center. So enough, he was completely reduced to building storms and tigers and that's it basically yeah. if he had lost that sturm and that's really expensive and you know they're good and all but uh that would have left his hq being one of the last things in, that he needed to to lose before he'd be in trouble uh those bunkers yeah. would go down real quick too so they could have gotten some rangers into that into pounder's base that would have been good game for pounder and then the the whole dynamic of the game probably would have shifted yeah very good so. fight on the left hand side though. Pounder and uh, and and um, a world. What the heck Firefly. is this? Firefly. His, his name isn't there anymore. Um, on the left hand side, we're doing a really really good job uh, back and forth. I mean, there was a lot of carnage, but all in all, I think going up against the Ostwins, it was a huge mistake to rely on the AT guns as much as he did. Um, he had, yeah. you know, he was going exclusively Rangers, not Rangers actually. He was. Um, um, Airborne, right? The far left player was airborne, yeah. or no? The yeah, middle he, player was airborne. Yeah, he was. Okay. Um, so I feel like, you know, if he had uh, concentrated on getting just a tank or two, because the mm -hmm. tank's yeah. going to stand up against a, a, an Oswin, he never would have been able to just charge in there with nothing but Oswins and wipe out the whole defense. Just Definitely one Sherman would have stopped that. If all three uh, allied players would have built tank depots and M10s, I think the game would have really been a lot different because all the the studs would have been killed off and Early they would have had game, a lot yep. more of their infantry be preserved and they would have uh, the axis would have had a hell of a, a much harder time uh taking on all the um just about everything the allies could have put forth but m10s definitely could have helped and tank depots just in general they came up too late from the the right hand side player Yep. All right. So, so um awesome use of veterancy and uh crazy yeah. sneak attacks by <laughs> by the Knight's Cross. That was awesome. Uh, so that is it, I guess, for Tales of Heroes episode number 67. As always, we remind you, if you enjoyed this show, go ahead and send us a buck. Let the guilt pile up, and if uh, you get to about five shows worth, send us five bucks on tales.gamefire.com. The reason we say that is because uh, PayPal takes a huge chunk out of the out of the thing. If you have really small amounts, because they take something like 30 sec 30. 30 cents plus a certain percent. So if you donate a dollar, we get like 60 cents of it. So they take a huge chunk out of it. But when you get to $5, they only take in like 2%. So that's why we say $5. So we appreciate everybody who's been uh, s submitting donations to help the show. Big, big thanks out to everyone, especially those guys that donated like $50 and $100. Huge, huge thanks to those guys. And I just wanted to point out before we go, uh, if you're watching this in the streaming player, um, I, I guess it's too late now. <laughs> uh, and if you don't know, if you scroll down just below the main streaming player window where you can vote on, on the thing and stuff, there's a button that says pop-up window. If you click that, you get a medium-sized window that's between full screen and the small screen. So I, I recommend you check that out. And I guess we will uh, call this one a day with a nice view of this massive tsunami of armor in the allied player's base. That is not something I want to be on the other side of, so let's get on the other side. There we go. Awesome. Awesome game. Thanks, guys, for tuning in to Tales of Heroes. Have a great night.